Hi everyone, this is another lesson for English Form 2. The lesson is for the textbook Pass 2, uh, for Form 2, and in, it is still on Unit 6. The topic is Money, this is Part 2. So let's look at the learning standards. There are four main skills. Reading 3.1.2 understands specific details and information in simple longer text on a range of familiar topics. Listening 1.1.2 understands independently specific information and details in simple longer text on a range of familiar topics. Speaking 2.1.2 asks for and responds appropriately to simple suggestions. Writing 4.1.2, make and respond to simple requests and suggestions. And then we have complementary skill, reading 3.1.2, understand specific details and information in simple longer text on the range of familiar topics. First, for the pre-lesson, teachers can show these three pictures. Okay, so look at the pictures and give words or phrases related to them. So students uh, would give words like shopping, fun, hair, buy and others. Then you can ask them uh, the question, do you like shopping, why and why not? The first lesson is reading. The reading lesson is on cultural awareness, the United Kingdom. So pupils are going to read and Listen to the text or the passage. Unit 6. Unit 6. Cultural Awareness. The United Kingdom. Exercise 2. A quick guide to second-hand shopping. Even if you haven't got lots of money to spend, you can still go shopping. Read on to find out where to find the best bargains. Charity shops Why do people in Britain like shopping in charity shops? First, because of the low prices. And second, because when you buy something, the money is used to help people in need. For example, Oxfam which has shops all over the UK, works to stop poverty in countries around the world. What can you find in a charity shop? Used clothes, shoes, books, toys, DVDs and kitchen equipment. It might take a while to find what you want, but it's fun looking. Car boot sales what do British people do with their old or unwanted possessions? Take them to a car boot sale. Every Saturday and Sunday, people all over Britain fill the boot of their car with things they don't want and take them to one of these sales. Car boot sales attract hundreds of people, so get there early for the best bargains. You never know what you might find. Recently, someone bought an old picture frame at a car boot sale for £1 and later found it was worth £500,000. Swap shops Do you want to get some new clothes without spending any money? The answer is a swap shop. Swap shops are events where you and other people can exchange clothes that you don't want. The clothes have to be good quality and look new. You can then choose clothes of the same value that other people have brought to the swap shop. Swap shops are popular with fashionable people who have lots of nice clothes that they never wear. Swapping clothes is also better for the environment than buying new ones. Teaching strategy is carousel. In a carousel, pupils work in small groups and move from station to station 
discussing each task as they go. Teachers places the six questions on different locations in the class and each group moves from a location to another to answer the questions. So we have questions for number three. Read the guide again and answer the questions. So there are six. Number one, how do charity shops use the money they make? Number two, which charity has a lot of shops? Number three, what do people sell at car booth sales? Number four, how much did a valuable picture frame cost at a car booth sale? What kind of clothes do you find at swap shops? What are two disadvantages of swapping? For the next question, number four, the teaching strategy is free discussion. There are five questions. People can freely discuss them in their respective groups. A representative could be asked to read out the group's answers. So it is on cultural comparison. Answer the questions about your own country. Do people like buying secondhand things? Why or why not? Are there any charity shops in your town or city? Three. What do people do with things that they don't want anymore? Can you go shopping on a Sunday? If so, where? Do young people ever swap clothes with each other? So these are the questions that you must answer about your own country, Malaysia. Now we are doing the integrated skills lesson. For the integrated skills, uh, pupils are going to listen to Lucy talking to her dad and then they have to complete uh, task 1 to task 4 in their notebook. So they are going to listen and repeat where they are going to practice their intonation. So the dialogue or the conversation is written above and then they have to listen to the audio. Unit 6. Integrated Skills Asking for a Favour Exercise 5 Hi Dad. Can I ask you a favour? OK. What is it? Could you lend me three pounds, please? Why? I want to buy a CD. How much does it cost? Thirteen pounds. But I've already got ten. I've got an idea. Why don't you earn the money instead? How can I do that? I'll pay you three... Unit 6. Integrated Skills. Asking for a favour. Exercise 5. Hi, Dad. Can I ask you a favour? The teaching strategy is presentation. Two pupils work together to practice the conversation between Lucy and her father. For the next exercise, the teaching strategy is rally coach. Two pupils work together to write a new dialogue similar to the one that they used for practice earlier. They change the item that they wish to buy and another way to earn money. Then they practice a dialogue. The model dialogue is pupil A and pupil B. Hi, can I ask you a favor? Okay, what is it? Could you lend me 20 ringgit please? Why? I want to buy a t-shirt. How much does it cost? 
30 ringgit, but I've already got 10. I've got an idea. Why don't you earn the money instead? How can I do that? I'll pay you 20 ringgit to cut the grass and water the plants in the garden. Okay, it's a deal. I'll do it when I finish my homework. Great, thanks. The next uh, lesson is on writing. So for writing, pupils will read and listen to the letter. So what is Paul going to do for his birthday party? So this is a letter, writing an informal letter. Unit 6. Writing. An informal letter. Exercise 1. 3 Bennett Road, Bolton, BL7 4PJ, Friday the 15th of April. Dear Grandma and Grandad, Thank you very much for my birthday present. I love my new trainers. I'm wearing them right now. They fit me perfectly. I'm going to have my birthday party tomorrow because it's Saturday. First, ten of my friends are coming to my house in the afternoon. Then we're going to go to the bowling alley in the town centre. My brother isn't going to come because he hates bowling. I think that's because he isn't very good at it. I'll invite him to join us later though. We're going to eat at my favourite burger bar. In the evening, we'll probably watch a film at my house. Mum and Dad bought me some great new DVDs for my birthday, so I'd like to watch one of them. I'll see you next month. Thanks again for the present. Love from Paul. Writing tasks. Write an informal letter. Plan. Imagine that it was your birthday yesterday and you are writing to thank a relative for their birthday present and tell them about your birthday party. Decide what present they bought you and think of three plans for your party. Then write, write an informal letter to your relative to thank them and tell them about your plans. Write three paragraphs and then check, check your writing. The teaching strategy here is table cloth. Each pupil shares ideas about present bought by the relatives and also the three plans for the party. Then the pupils present the ideas to the group members and pupils write their letter. They can write in the class or as homework. Suggestion for lower proficiency, pupils could rearrange the sentences in the letter for average proficiency Pupils could fill in the blanks in the letter with words or phrases. And for high proficiency, pupils could write the letter themselves. Let's look at the format for informal letter. First of all, you have to write the address of the sender. For example, number 2, Jalan Satria, 5, Taman Satria Utama, 701000 Seremban, Negeri Sembilan. And then make sure that you write all the commas and the full stop. And then we have the date, 17 July 2020. So remember that you have to write the month in full. Let's continue the format. After that, we have the salutation where you write Dear Cousin Sammy. So don't forget to write the word Dear as a salutation. Moving on, uh, we are at paragraph 1, which is the greeting. Uh, there are a few examples here. For example, hi, how are you? I hope you are in the pink. Hi, I hope you are in the best of health. Hello, how's life in Teluk Kupang? Hello, how's your family getting on? Hello, thank you for your letter. Hi, I'm glad to know that you did well in your exam. Hi, I'm doing great here and hope you are fine too. Paragraph 2, Content. Remember that pupils have to write the present bought by their relatives and also three plans for the party. 
Example, I celebrated my 14th birthday yesterday at home. My parents invited many of our relatives for the party. I also invited some of my friends. Before that, mother baked my favourite chocolate cake and decorated the living room with the help of my elder sister. We hung colourful balloons and streamers. The party started at 3 in the afternoon when all the invited guests had arrived. The guests gave me lots of presents. I was over the moon receiving the presents with a wide smile. First, they sang a birthday song for me when mother brought in the cake. After that, we played some games like musical chess and treasure hunt. The winners were given prizes. My sister served them soft drinks and delicious tidbits. We had a whale of a time. The last event was the opening of the presents. My parents gave me a new camera as they know that I love taking photos. My sister's gift was a set of storybooks by my, my favourite writer Beverly Clearly. There were also shirts and board games given by my relatives and friends. Thank you for sending me a pair of jeans. I love them. Finally, at about 6 in the afternoon, the party came to an end. We were all tired but happy. The parents of my friends came to collect them. I helped mother and sister clean up the mess we made. For paragraph 3, it is the conclusion. So these are a few examples. Uh, you can write, hope to hear from you soon. I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Hope to receive a reply from you soon. Lastly, do reply and best of luck in your coming exam. Send my regards to aunt and uncle. Or you can say, take care. Format for informal letter, which is the ending. We call it the sign off. So you must write your cousin and signature, Brian. Assessment. We can use assessment or teachers can use assessment, which is called KWL chart. KWL chart is a graphic organizer that helps pupils organize information before, during and after a lesson. It can be used to engage pupils in a new topic, activate prior knowledge, share unit objectives or the learning standards and also monitor students' learning. Let's look at the example of KWL. L chart. So this is a chart. Assess what you know about a particular topic before and after you have engaged with it. Fill the columns below with what you know, K for know, about the topic, what you want to know for W, and what you have learned for L. So this is the chart. Teachers can use this with the pupils in the class. So that's all for my sharing today. I hope that you have benefited from this uh, video. And then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.